Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at 10 things that Valheim can teach you about gaming. Unfortunately, many games have become predatory. Once upon a time, games were just games. Games were played just for fun. Unfortunately, these days, games have become machines of addiction and profit. They're not even games anymore. And at the end of the day, it's us, the players, who pay the price for this. It has become totally normal for AAA game studios to be predatory, attack their own player base. And Valheim has shown me that it doesn't have to be that way. I don't have to tolerate that anymore. I've found a game made by people who I actually trust, and I didn't even think that was possible. I'd given up. For me, Valheim has been one of those games that just changes how you look at all other games. Valheim has inspired me to stop playing games that are harming my personal well-being and wasting my time. Most games are going to continue being harmful for us. This isn't going to change anytime soon, especially not in the mainstream. There are many ways that modern gaming can expose a person to many toxic, nasty energies. And these ultimately end up harming our well-being, even though we play games to have fun. I mean, really, why are we here? You don't get paid for this, right? But for now, let's ignore the toxicity in the gaming scene in general from players and focus on the toxicity from the game developers. It's a sad time when so many game developers have skeletons in their closet. Some of these companies are run with such toxicity that when you purchase their games, we are saying that it's okay to exploit your gamers, it's okay to exploit your workers, and it's even okay to exploit women. When you give a company like Activision Blizzard any of your time or money, doing this suggests that a woman being driven to the point of suicide over sexual abuse at her job, developing games, is an acceptable outcome. That's what we say when we pay these people. We're suggesting it's just one bad apple. They fired those people. Everything's good. They've taken our childhood nostalgia and turned it into a monster. And I will never forgive them for that. I will never put another moment of my effort into playing a Blizzard product again especially after I've played games like Valheim, and I've been showed, yeah, games can be healthy. You don't have to abuse your workers to make a good game. But you know what? Games don't have to waste our time. Playing a good game in moderation makes your life better. A good game doesn't drive you to isolate yourself and destroy your life. A good game can even bring connection and joy into your life when there's none. For a lot of people out there, myself included, MMOs like RuneScape and World of Warcraft gave us a place to just be okay when our life was horrible or lonely for whatever reason. People don't realize how many of us are suffering, and that's why you gotta be kind. You never know what's going on with someone. Most people just lie and say they're okay, but they're probably not. And that's the role of a game, a truly good game. It's to give humans a place that they can feel okay when they don't have that. That's why it's so insulting. Games waste so much of our time, and so many games are just pointless addiction loops. Games have the power to do the opposite. Games can be a profound sense of healing and personal growth. And Valheim has reminded me that that's possible, that's real, that's not just some crap. If people are talking, they're probably complaining. We live in a world where people never run out of things to complain about. People complain so much that you know something exists because people are complaining about it. For the most part, people struggle to appreciate anything, especially things they already have. It's as if the moment they get it, they just start complaining about something else. So next time you're looking for a new game to play, try this out. Don't look at any reviews. Don't look at any top 10 lists. Instead of that, I want you to find a YouTube video or an article where somebody is talking about their personal favorite game. The game that they love to play, they remember fondly and have revisited multiple times. 
And then after you've listened to them express their joy and their love for this game, go play it yourself. And see how you feel compared to looking at the most critical reviews of all the best possible, best, best, best master game, best seller, best seller, best top rated games. It's all nonsense. As far as I can tell, we live in a world where people literally live to find things to complain about. Valheim has taught me that game designers have an interesting challenge between listening to their player base and knowing when to say screw it and just doing what's right for the game from their perspective as the developers. It's not actually possible to satisfy most gamers. For whatever reason, most players just don't remain satisfied with what they have. Call me judgmental, but Valheim, it's an absolute gem. Anybody who doesn't see the magic in this game, well, they can just go find some other game and complain about that instead. Just leave Valheim alone, okay? It's almost as if everybody is in a rush to get right to the end of their life and die. The most common criticism of Valheim is that the content doesn't come out fast enough. Okay, yeah, sure. Content does come out slowly. What are these people gonna do when they get to the end of that new content when it comes out? I know what they're gonna do. You know what they're gonna do. They're gonna complain. They're gonna be like, Oh, Valheim's boring now because there's no new content because it all released and there's... Uh, uh. There's always something. The fact that the most common criticism of Iron Gate is that they take their time. It's something that brings me great comfort and joy. When I play Valheim, I know I'm playing a game whose developers are focused on making a beautiful game. These aren't people who dream about all of the millions they're gonna make when they sell the gaming company. Iron Gate is the opposite. They're tried and true, honest game developers. They have their game and they're developing it and they love it. And you can just feel it. You can feel that they love the game by the way they take their time. When we say that Iron Gate takes too long to make content and new biomes, maybe that says more about us than them. We're always obsessed with high numbers. Lots of content online talks about Valheim like it's a game that lost its potential or doesn't live up to that potential. There's always some catch when mainstream trendy channels or review websites say something about Valheim. But come on, we need to take a step back and realize Valheim was just a small indie game between a couple people. And then it went insanely viral when it was in pre-release. They were just like trying to get more players and it accidentally got huge and launched like they were like oh well this is our game launch here we go we weren't done yet imagine going through that acting like valheim had a regular game launch and then failed to retain its player base is a completely inaccurate <laughs> presentation of what happened constant growth is cancer there are a few things that grow constantly that are healthy what's natural in this world is ups and downs this vibe our culture has of constant obsessive upward growth is not normal, it is not sustainable, and there's no way that this is going to last. Valheim is a beautiful masterpiece. It doesn't matter how many active players there are on Steam. The Valheim world feels more real when another player is logged onto the server. What's crazy about this is you don't actually need to see the other player and be playing next to them. There's just something about knowing someone's out there in this world. It just makes it feel more real. There's something magical that happens when you hit pause and you see that you're not the only person in the world. Even for me personally, I'm connecting with you. You're watching this video right now and I made something and you're listening, right? So I feel connected through this Valheim content. I feel like there are other people in this world. And that is the critical thing if you get bored of Valheim. Gotta figure out how to add that social element. That's what you're missing. That's what keeps people playing. Valheim is the most immersive when you feel scared. Games in general, they just feel more immersive if you're scared. I mean, think about it, they have to. You can't be scared unless you feel invested or immersed. That's the thing, right? You know it's a game, but you forget and you feel scared. 
That's the trick. Fear of losing our items, fear of losing our time, fearing destruction of our base or loss of our skills. All of these things serve to increase our immersion <laughs> when they're balanced appropriately. Pay attention next time, because as soon as you stop feeling scared, it's usually not that long before you stop having fun. Other games start to feel more appealing. Something flashy and new that they say is gonna be the best. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. And you know what? Valheim is already good enough for me. Valheim's given me experiences that no other game has given me. Honestly, Iron Gate could just remove the Ashlands and the Deep North entirely. Don't get me wrong, I'd be disappointed, but Valheim would still be a masterpiece to me if the North and South were just empty oceans. We always complain about Iron Gate taking their time, but really, we're the ones who can do something to make it more interesting. Start a server with a new group of Valheimers you haven't played with before. Why don't you record and publish some Valheim videos or a building guide? Just do something different. Go play Valheim in a way that you didn't play it before. Now that Hilder's request is out, there's all sorts of amazing world modifications. You can turn portals off entirely or make it so anything, metals included, can go through them. Now, if you can't find other people to play Valheim with or play it the way you want to, then just comment below. I'm sure there's other people watching these videos who are in the same situation. Everyone finds someone to play with eventually. Valheim is like a tool to live a better life. Are you going to look at that tool and complain about how it could be better? Or are you going to use that tool to live the best life that you possibly can? If you want to support my work, then consider using my link, JP Valheim, at Zap Hosting to get your own dedicated Valheim server. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.